So the topic is TTP, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura versus ITP, immune thrombocytopenia, which is the current name for immune thrombocytopenic purpura. Now, the connecting thread between these two entity, the similarity is definitely the term thrombocytopenia is there. Thrombocytopenia is the common feature. But if you look very closely at the second entity, that is the thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, the main problem is not thrombocytopenia or the lack of platelets. The main problem is the thrombus formation. It's a basically comes under the group of thrombotic microangiopathy. TTP is basically a disease example is of thrombotic microangiopathy. That means thrombus, a platelet rich thrombus that would be formed in the microvascular, microangio, angio means vessel, which is pathological because why? Because in small blood vessels, particularly in the arterioles and the capillaries, there would be a platelet rich thrombus formation. And uh, as they, the, this platelet rich thrombus formation would be consuming a lot of platelets, that's why thrombocytopenia occurs. Thrombocytopenia, we all know, Thrombocyte site means cell which forms a thrombus that is platelet. Thrombocyte is equal to platelet and penia is the Greek goddess of poverty, lack of that. So thrombocytopenia means lack of thrombocyte that is a platelet. Now uh, the question is that I mentioned you that TTP, the main problem is a microvascular thrombus formation. Question is that that why that microvascular thrombus formation occurs? That is the next thing you need to understand. The microvascular thrombus formation occurs in TTP due to some defect in Adam TS13. The defect could be hereditary genetic or defect could be an inhibitor produced against this Adam TS13. What is Adam TS13? That is the next thing we need to understand. What is Adam TS13 whose deficiency is causing TTP? Now Adam TS13 stands for A, the first A is for A, the D stands for disintegrin, the second A, ADAs, and M stands for metalloprotease. T and S stands for thrombospondin, thrombospondin multiplied one, 13 stands for member number 13. So basically this A disintegrin and metalloprotease with the thrombospondin type 1 motif, member number 13, this mouthful of name, what basically it is trying to say that this is an enzyme and this enzyme is a metalloprotease, it requires the help of a metal zinc. And the basic job of this enzyme is to cut the, it's like a biological scissor, which cuts the, the large multiple, ultra large multimers of the von Willebrand factor into small pieces, which is functional. That means when the von Willebrand factor is synthesized from the endothelial cell, it is synthesized in a very larger form, ultra large form, and they need to be cut into small pieces. Like when you are preparing a suit or clothing, you actually make it from a large piece of cloth and you cut it into small pieces like a tailor makes it and in a tailor made way makes it a suit or a dress or a shirt whatever it is similarly the adam ts13 is that enzyme which basically is making the vw tailor made for for day to day usage from cutting from a big piece now the main problem in ttp is the defect in adam ts13 so if the Adam TS13 is not there, that biological scissor is not there, what would happen? That the von Willebrand factor would remain in that very ultra large multimer form. They cannot be cut into the small pieces, the functional pieces. Then what is the problem with that? If it remains in that larger form? The larger form usually remains attached to the endothelium and that it has a higher tendency or frequency to, to, to bind with platelet. So what would happen if the Adam TS13 is not there, Von Willebrand factor would stay as that ultra large multimer and it has it, sh it shows a tendency to unusually bind with platelets and so it would consume a lot of platelets and in the wall of the blood vessel, small blood vessels, they would form a platelet rich thrombus. Is that thrombus formation was necessary? Answer is no, they are forming it unnecessarily. They are basically consuming the platelets unnecessarily, quite like DIC what you see. As a result, what is going to happen as your platelets are all getting consumed, you are developing secondarily thrombocytopenia. As you are developing thrombocytopenia, obviously you can show purpuric spot. So that's why the name comes thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. That means first there is a thrombus formation. That thrombus formation, platelet rich thrombus formation is consuming thrombocyte platelets. That's why there is a penia or deficiency or lack of platelets. And as a result, as a consequence of that, you are developing a purpuric spots. That's the whole, the meaning of these three terms, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura.
Now, TDP can occur in two ways actually. It can be hereditary, Upsa Spulman syndrome, or it can be some acquired uh, immunologic, they say, because it is related to inhibitor forms against like the NMT13. The main idea is that, that what actually happens, there is a characteristically a painter described, five things described for TDP, but in real life they are novel thing, this, that painter is basically useless. The two most useful feature of the TDP to diagnose this is the first two. There should be a thrombocytopenia and there should be a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Other three, that means fever, renal failure or the neurological features, they are may be seen, may not be seen. They are not the defining feature. The first two defining feature is the presence of thrombocytopenia plus the presence of the microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Now, why the microangiopathic hemolytic anemia would happen? The same thing which you see uh, in DIC also, that there is a platelet thrombus formation occurring in a small blood vessel. Now, in that small blood vessel, the RBC is coming at a high speed, like a, like a sports car comes at a high speed, hits that bump, that bump is platelet rich thrombus, RBC rupture due to the mechanical trauma. As a result, there is a hemolytic anemia occurs. And this hemolytic anemia is called microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. Why? Because this hemolytic anemia is occurring due to some pathology which is there inside a micro small angio means blood vessel which is pathological why that small blood vessel is pathological because there is a already a platelet rich thrombus is there the presence of thrombus is definitely not normal inside that and that thrombus which is there inside a small blood vessel as this hits that it becomes ruptured so that's why we see cystocytes on the peripheral blood smear of this thing and due to this presence of microvascular thrombi we can see some other features sometimes we can see some pathologies in the kidney in the neurological but the defining two features obviously would be this two plus 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 there should be presence of the adam ts13 deficiency that should be that should be proved or documented that there is a defect or deficiency of the adam ts13 usually less than 30 percent that should be less than 10 percent it should be seen actually that is the characteristic feature for this uh, ttp now i come to the other thing immune thrombocytopenia itp now the older name was immune thrombocytopenic idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura because we are not smart enough to to know what is the cause of that idiopathic means i don't know then we became smarter and called this disease immune thrombocytopenic purpura because we became smarter and we knew that the reason was immunological immune thrombocytopenic purpura now we have cut out the term purpura from immune itp we just call i for immune t for thrombo cyto and p for penia why purpura has been removed because we don't get purpura in all the places the defining feature of itp is this that there should be an isolated thrombocytopenia without any abnormality in wbc series or rbc series and the, usually the cut up of the wbc should be less than 100000 less than 1 lakh more international term is less than 100000 per microliter and itp the platelets less is due to a different mechanism uh, ITP has a lot of mechanisms, but the key mechanism which has been found is that that there is usually an autoantibody production against the glycoprotein receptors over the platelets. This is the most popular mechanism which explains the ITP. That means we know that a lot of receptors which are expressed over the platelets, glycoprotein 1B, glycoprotein 2B, 3A, glycoprotein 1A, all these receptors against the receptor body start to think they are bad they are pathological they are foreign and they start to produce antibody against them these antibodies come igg antibodies hemoglobin g antibodies and tag those glycoprotein receptors over the platelets and when these tagged platelets go through the spleen the splenic macrophages destroy them this antibody coated platelets and that's why splenic splenectomy also is useful for ITP. So that is the basic problem in the <coughs> ITP. So ITP what will be getting definitely if we compare there ITP would not be getting any feature of microangiopathic hemolytic anemia unlike the TTP. ITP there will be no cystocytes on the peripheral blood smear. These features would not be present. ITP there will be no presence of uh, Adam TS13 deficiency or defect which would be seeing this. So this is the basic difference between TTP and ITP. I would continue this in the further lectures also. Thank you so much.